Hi there. This is going to be the first lesson on actually working with tables in Dreamweaver. I think you're going to find that tables are pretty easy, pretty intuitive to create, but they can become very complex as you work with them in more detail. So let's get started. First we're going to start with creating a table by using the insert bar at the top of the screen where you can click on the icon labeled table. When you do so, you will get a dialog box that looks like this. It basically gives you information about the, and asks you for information about the dimensions and uh, characteristics of the table that you are creating. Notice that it asks for and, and assumes, in my case, that it has three rows by two columns, that the total table width is going to be 200 pixels, and it also asks for information about border thickness in pixels, cell padding, and cell spacing. We're going to ignore that for now because we're going to cover that in another lesson. It also asks where you want to have headers or if you want to have headers. Headers are uh, specially formatted cells on your table that are in bold that run along either, in this case, the left column, the top column, or you can have them on both columns. All this really does when you select any of these three is to automatically format the fonts in the, uh, the text in those cells to be in bold. Um, we're going to leave it for none at this point. Also, as I've emphasized in class, whenever you create any kind of uh, non-text non on your page, and by that I mean images, graphics, photos, etc., or in this case tables, you should also always include um, for those who have visual impairments an alt tag uh, for images and in the case of tables a caption. So you can put a caption in here and you can also uh, include a summary of the data in the table here so that it gives more information than just the caption and I think that would be a very good idea for you to also include a summary of what the table shows. So now we click on OK and notice that it creates a table at the upper left corner of this window. Uh, it, the table is, as I selected, two columns by three rows. It also provides ex extra information about the um, table here by indicating that there are, is, it, the table total width is 200 pixels. And it also allows me to be able to do other things here. For example, I can click on, the, on each of these tabs to select the column. Um, it also asks me if I want to select a column or change the column width or other things related to the column, but we'll get to that in more detail in another video. Um, I can also select the column by dragging the cursor over the top, and, and then when it points to a, the column beneath it, then I can select it. Notice, by the way, that as I move the, col the, cur the pointer, mouse pointer around, on the table that it changes in a variety of different ways. Notice here it has the eye bar and if I click in there that allows me to select and enter text. And I am entering text uh, now just to show you how it handles text. Um, I press tab by the way to move between those two cells. As I move around again the cursor um, I, over to the, to the left side as I indicated before, I can, when it's showing the rightward pointing arrow, select that row. But notice that as I go down slightly and to the left, it gives me an upward to the right facing arrow, which allows me to select the whole table. Then I can do some modifications there as well. If I move to the right side, however, I don't get, and I click off of it, it deselects the table. But I do not get the arrow to be able to select the row. You can only select the row from the left side. However, it does give me a different functionality. When I hover the mouse over the border of the table, I can cl click down and drag to the right, and this resizes the table by and holds uh, and, and stretches the rightmost column uh, to have a different dimension. Notice that the column on the left column did not change at all. I know you're tempted to ask, well, what happens if you have more than two columns? And I'm not going to tell you now. I want you to explore this on your own. So the key thing about learning about tables is you should play and have fun with it and experiment. 
back to the table resizing. I'm going to resize it back down. Um, I could also correct my error by doing a edit undo. Um, and if I do it twice here, it will resize it back to the original. And I did that because I want to show you some other features of the, of the uh, setting the dimensions and the proportions differently on a table. If I hover over the very bottom corner and click and drag, I can resize the table as well. And notice that it is changing the dimensions of the cells within the table as well. Again, I'm going to undo both of these changes. And now I'm going to hold down the shift key as I click and drag on that little tab. And you'll notice that it holds the relative proportions of the cells and the table size steady, no matter where I move the cursor because I'm holding down the shift key. So if you ever want to resize your table but keep the proportions the same, just use the shift key to do so. Again, I'm going to deselect, I mean um, undo that change. So what can you do when you select a particular row or column? So let me select this column. And there are a variety of options that you have available to you at this time. You can um, make all the text in it be bold. Um, you can make it all be italic. Um, you can change them back to undo those. You can also do the standard text formatting, so you can make the text in those in that selected in those selected cells be centered, or right justified, or right and left justified. Of course, you don't see that here because I don't have enough text in there. <clears throat> you can also do other text type formatting for that whole column by the various other formatting tools down here at the bottom. So as you can see, you can get fairly complex um, formatting capabilities in a table using the property inspector at the bottom. So what I'd like for you to do now is to take some time to play around with creating tables and reformatting them with the property inspector and by dragging and dropping so you can get some sense of how a table works and how you create it and how you can modify it. When you're done with that, you can go on, and when you feel more, most comfortable with it, you can go on to the next video.